Hey, welcome back. Confirmation hearings are now underway for the first black woman nominated to the U.S. Supreme Court. Judge Katanji Brown Jackson faces four days of hearings before the Senate Judiciary Committee. And here to talk about it is Mississippi College constitutional law professor Matt Steffi. Matt, thanks so much for joining us. It's genuinely my pleasure. What are we likely to see in these hearings? Well, we're going to see the full range of political theater. And I think the trick is to try to sift through that for the few moments that are likely to define these hearings. Today was just opening statements by Judge Brown and the senators on the Judiciary Committee, which is evenly split between Republicans and Democrats. Tomorrow, each member of the committee, all 22 of them will have half an hour uh, to uh, question uh, Judge Brown. And then on Thursday, they've got 20 minutes then that concludes on the fourth day with the committee starting its own process. That process will continue for about a week until the committee ultimately votes whether or not to recommend that Judge Brown be confirmed. Uh, Senate uh, Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said that Republicans are likely to be nicer to Judge Brown Jackson than the Democrats were to Justice Clarence Thomas or to Justice Brett Kavanaugh. D d do you see this happening? Well, that's a, I, that was an interesting moment, and we'll see if it holds true. Now, Judge Brown has not been accused of sexual assault, which uh, Ted Cruz minimized by saying, uh, was high school dating habits. And so that gives us a little bit of a preview of what I mentioned earlier. There's going to be a lot of boring political theater where uh, uh, the, the various committee members are going to give sound bites that'll be later used for fundraising and campaigning in an election year. But there will be moments that come to define it. This was an early moment of that kind. The Republican uh, members have committed themselves to being more civil. I don't know what that means. Judge Brown is an extremely accomplished and well-qualified candidate. She's got a law degree and an undergraduate degree from Harvard, has been a judge for nearly a decade and been confirmed twice by the Senate. She clerked for Justice Breyer. So she's got the resume you'd want from a judge. It will be the ideology I think that gets the attention, particularly of the Republican members of the committee. If, Matt, if you had to talk about the controversial aspects of this nomination, is that what it will be? I think so, and I, I think it will center on her service as a public defender. That normally the route to advancement is as a prosecutor, and uh, even though she's got at least three close family members, father, a brother, I think, and an uncle, who were police officers or detectives. She uh, served as a public defender before she went into private practice at a large uh, law firm. And I think that's time as a public defender, particularly when she was assigned to represent uh, detainees at Guantanamo that are going uh, to get a lot of attention, particularly from the oppositional side of the aisle. They will try to paint her out uh, as out of step with the uh, national security and law enforcement objectives, which again I mentioned is a top sell when you're talking about someone whose family's in law enforcement. Yeah. And after all, the Constitution requires that lawyers uh, represent the accused, and so she's discharging a constitutional duty, but it is not a constitutional duty that plays as well on the political stage. So I think that's going to get a lot of focus. When the truth is, having one of nine be from the defense, not the prosecution side, and have a judge who spent the better part of a decade as a trial, not just an appellate judge, would be a real asset for the court. Oh, we, we, we shall see how this works out. Thank you, Matt Steffi, for joining us today. We'll have you back, I'm sure, before it's all over with. Oh, Thank yes. you. Thank you. I look forward to it.